Yes, Leslie, you're here first, but unfortunately, uh, the Home Office has told me I cannot award Pine Points for scheduled streams. Sorry. Sorry, Leslie. But that's the rules from the big guy. Welcome, welcome if you're new here. A while back, I, uh, I'm trying to think who I said this to, but I, I gave some apologists a piece of advice when, uh, when t talking to, to atheists. And the advice was uh, avoid the historical evidence for Christianity, avoid uh, even a lot of philosophical arguments. Focus in on free will uh, and uh, moral accountability, moral responsibility. And this is what this topic of this debate was, basically. It was, uh, is there an immaterial soul? And a lot of the arguments that guys like Cliff and Stuart make are, look, if there's no soul, there was no free choice, uh, bag of chemicals, you guys have heard this all before. But this is a good way for theists to go, in my opinion, because it's so intuitive. We feel like we're making free choices. And maybe we are. I, I lean, I'm not dogmatic about this. Uh, there could be, uh, we could be fully determined. And if the universe started exactly the way it did uh, a thousand times, I would be sitting here in this spot at this moment doing exactly what the, the chain reaction would have done. But we know through quantum mechanics that... Um, that the, the spin of the electron can be up or it can be down. And it's completely, utterly random. And if quantum mechanics can be scaled up, maybe we are free in, in the randomness sense. But anyhow, I think it's irrelevant, really. This whole topic is irrelevant because the causes, the domino effect is so complex. And this, by the way, this is the answer that Calvinists make. We don't know the mind of God. It's it's only a, a God, only Yahweh could could know all the details of what could happen and what would happen, what did happen, and so forth. It's so complex that we live our lives like like we like we're free. Anyhow, so this was the debate: Is there an immaterial soul? T Jump and Aaron Ra, I think uh, both did a, a great job. However, Aaron Ra is, um, and it's my fault. I take full responsibility for this. I was asked to come on as Aaron Ra's translator. So he would say what he wanted to say, and then I would um, massage it. Uh, but I, I had a family commitment and uh, at the last minute, and I couldn't make it. So, But I can do it now. I printed out the, um, the transcript of what Aaron Ra said. And I'm not going to do all of it, but I'm going to go to some points in the debate, and I will translate it, uh, which I should have done yesterday. Again, my apologies. It's, I take full responsibility for that. And we'll see how it goes, okay? So this is, this is meant specifically for Christians who will either dismiss Aaron Ra because he swears or dismiss Aaron Ra because he raises his voice or is just too offended to hear foul language. You know, I'm sort of the same way. Like, I, I tend to blush a little bit when people, you know, say, you know, those words. And, um, like, I'm a gosh darn it type of guy. And so in this way, I think I can relate to a lot of Christians. Welcome, welcome, if you're new and just came in. Here we go. This is uh, me translating for Aaron Ra. And Aaron Ra, if you're listening, I hope I, uh, I translate good enough for you. Here we go. Then when it comes to faith... Every single one of us has faith. None of us can prove. I can't prove that what I'm living for is true. But no, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do this. That what I'm I not going to do this. Is true. So faith is not blindness. Let's, faith is blindness faith by is definition. Evidence. I will not well, have you project you. faith on me. Let's let's. Before do not tell me that my ways. lack of. Do not before tell we... me that my lack of religion counts as a religion. It doesn't. I'm an anti-theist. I don't have a religion. Don't push your said. religion on me. I'm also me. an epistivist. I do not have faith. Faith is it the is faith. most 
dishonest position it is possible to have. Any belief that requires faith should be rejected for that reason. Faith is blindness by definition. It means that you are convinced of something False without definition. evidence, and you maintain that belief despite evidence to the contrary. Do False not project definition. your own faults onto me. What we can do is... Okay, so I'm going to translate that, that portion for sensitive Christians, but in order to do that, I got to get the mood just right. So let me add a little music. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And we need some relaxing background. Okay, so let me translate what Aaron Ra just said about faith. Let me turn down the music a little bit. I respectfully disagree with respect your definition of faith is not mine, nor the vast majority of humanity. The word faith is used in society, and even among many, many Christians, as well as several dictionaries, is believing something without material or empirical evidence. It is believing something without proof or without complete evidence. I hear, I hear what you're saying that I have or use faith. But please understand we're talking two different languages. So please, I ask humbly, don't project your definition of faith upon me, which I reject. Also, please realize that I define religion as a belief in and worship of a personal God or gods. Therefore, I am not religious, nor am I in a religion because I don't worship any gods. Let me sum up by saying that in my opinion, taking a strong, active belief on something based on faith or incomplete and insufficient empirical evidence is unwise and may and does cause harm in society. Please don't project your sincerely held views onto me. Thank you. And may I ask, where did you buy those collared shirts? They look magnificent. Okay, so that's the first translation. Let's uh, continue on, shall we? This is 4944. Again, I have Aaron Ra's transcript right here, so I'm translating on the fly. Anyone, you have one hundred percent Thomas. False. Doubting Thomas coming to Jesus, and Jesus says, "Doubting Tom, yes, be, blessed is he who has not seen. You believe, you believe and because you saw. One of time. Okay. Of Gentlemen, all one of time. the evidence. Yeah, you believe right. because you saw. Be, but blessed is he who has not seen, and but believe. And what is he saying? Thank though? you. What does he mean by that? What we He's saying do, based on he the means process, you're supposed to believe one without second. evidence. One second. Okay, you. I'm so sorry to have muted you guys. I'm so sorry to do this. They, they can't hear you. They, so basically right now, uh, just to maybe redirect us, I, I think a definition of faith debate is a fun and interesting one. Absolutely, I agree. I think that just to steer us back to the soul in particular, I think that'd be kind of more germane if it's okay, guys. They're going to continue to strawman my position while, while falsely accusing me of misquoting them while they're strawmanning me. He just pulled my evidence and tried to use my evidence against me. And then he said that Doubting Thomas had all this evidence. But no, he didn't because Jesus showed up in disguise so that nobody could recognize him. So no, Thomas didn't have evidence. Thomas was completely justified in demanding evidence. And then we're told this bogus story that is supposed he to He didn't say, talk well, to the disciples before. And then, Thomas, and then Thomas did he talk to the disciples before? Exactly. And then Thomas totally wrong. Mean exactly. Check it out. He had eyewitness Check reports from out. the other disciples what that they saw Jesus yes, from the dead. So That's a yeah, form of really, he, Okay. Okay, so I got uh, the transcript here. Let me um, Let me see if I can translate what Aaron Rado was saying. I hope you understand that quoting the Bible is irrelevant to how the word faith is used in everyday life. However, I am very glad you brought up verse, the verse in John 20, 29, because to my ears, it really sounds like Jesus is saying to Thomas that those who believe in him without seeing 
are blessed. To me, that sounds like Jesus is looking in a favorable way on believing or trusting blindly. Please hear me. I understand you disagree, and we can agree to disagree on this. By the way, Stuart, you and your dad have amazing hair. Okay. The next passage I、uh, would like to read is.、Uh, 5127. And again, I hope,、um, Arn Ra, I'm、uh, translating correctly what you meant to say. Pardon my, pardon my interruption. I understand how this, just to shelve it for now, and maybe we can come back to it later. And if we steer back to the soul. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. It happens in every debate I have. The believer always tries to push their religion on him. Oh, atheism is a religion. No, it's not. Your, your, your lack of faith is a faith. No, it's not. Your lack of religion is a religion. No, it's not. Quit trying to push your own bullshit onto me. I'm、great、not going to have it.、Argument. I don't have a religion. I don't have faith. And、you're、you don't have evidence. That's it. What? I think this is a, is a good opportunity. You, you did exactly straw man. We, okay, just a good. If we just. This is what I think Aaron Ra was saying. I'll translate for you. I understand that oftentimes, in these discussions, the opposing side doesn't understand fully what the other is saying. I hope you can empathize with my frustration, which you may feel as well. Which one imports their beliefs on another without asking them first if this is what they're actually saying. The way I define faith and religion is different than the way you define it. I do not use faith or am in a religion, and I hope you can understand this. If not, we can、uh, agree to disagree. By the way, Stuart Cliff, congratulations on the growth of your YouTube channel. Okay,、um, let's go to. I'll translate. Timestamp fifty eight twenty. And you're not、okay. thinking that the answer is I had to. No. Okay. So you say you should not have talked to me that way, which means I'm holding you responsible. You did so. So everything、wrong. you're saying matches with our purely materialistic chemical minds. Where is the extra thing? That magical whatever it is. That is a soul. That how do、free、how do we? I, what is a soul anyway? Because you said it's self. Obviously, it's not self. We have a self, whether we have a soul or not. We disagree. We have a mind, I called it self. I said your soul is yourself. It's your personhood, your personality. We your have a personhood. We have said, we have a self. Right at the start. Okay.、Right. We would then, say then, the then, then, then we have a soul. If you're、yeah. going to decide that that a soul is just the self that we experience as as our purely material self, then fine. We have a soul. If that's what it means—a purely material, physical experience of the of the physical world. Great. I have a soul. I would have thought that it was supposed to be some sort of supernatural thing, that was supposed to like, maybe survive the death of the physical body, something like that. But you're saying that no, it's just the thing that we pure materialists already accept. Okay, fine. So pure materialism is correct. Thank you very much. I thought you were arguing for something else. Pure materialism is incomplete. We obviously have Show physical bodies, but、missing. there's more to us than physical bodies. Show me that. We have that. free will. We have rational abilities. How is that, that different? That go beyond the brain. That go beyond molecules. There's、okay. a me, a you. Show me over that over it goes again, beyond、Easter. molecules. And the only way there can be a soul and a real self. Okay, I have the transcript here of what Arun Ra was saying. Let me translate. It is really refreshing when we can find common ground and mutually agree on some things. I'm glad we both admit that we are made of matter. I'm open to the idea there being something else in addition to matter, like the soul. But wouldn't it behoove us to have some empirical evidence for the soul before believing that there is a soul? I'm willing to have my mind changed on this, if you can demonstrate the existence of a soul. Okay, now I'll translate.、Uh, Timestamp 
111.37. So we want to go in about five to 10 minutes into the Q&A. Nothing but misrepresent. I did not remotely in any way imply that, that popularity determines truth. These guys are deliberately misrepresenting me. I did not mean anything like that, and that is clear. I said, said that nobody, nobody, zip, zero, nobody would respect the no thing that you said on, because man. it was so <laughs> stupid. Okay, so it's, it's definitely, I appreciate it's, every... it's not just a stupid thing that he we... said, it's also the reason that he said it was stupid because it is a misrepresentative, a misrepresentation of my position. We appreciate Again, which is all that he can do, which is why he's everybody. smiling like an ass because all we they can do is misrepresent my position and that's it, that's all they've got. This guy with the curly hair and the green shirt, all he's done is repeat the same mistake that me and Tom have repeated again and again and again, but he can't correct himself. He can't realize that, oh, that's a straw man. Maybe I should fix that. You know what? Me hey, too. fix that. <laughs> Stop repeating the same damn mistake. It's not going to get better the more times you repeat it. All righty, all right. We chill do out, have to go chill into, out. let's see, we probably got about five to ten minutes. Um... So let me translate what Arn Raw was saying. When I hear your arguments, I can't help but think that we are not being understood. We agree that things like memories, choices, moral accountability, rationality, all exist. We agree. But we would like empirical evidence for something extra existing, like the soul. I'm getting a little tired of hearing the same response over and over and over. Maybe it would be best if you could repeat back what you think we're saying so we don't waste each other's time. Okay, I'll translate uh, timestamp 11320. About there. Cut off your head. This will be my last translation. I'm getting tired. That is literally a thing we can do. Yeah, and the guy that I had a debate with last month, when he made a similar statement, he said, so is the music on the CD? And I said, yes, the music is on the CD. And he says, so if we break the CD, does the music fall out? No, that's somebody trying to be stupid. That's not somebody who's actually thinking seriously. Yes, we can cut the monkey's brain out and we can find that data. There's been studies that shown where, how we can actually show images within the mind in physical terms, using physical means. Yes, that actually happens. Now, don't try to misrepresent my position anymore. Show me. We understand that we have a self. We have the ability to make decisions. We have free will. Now, I know that you have a false assumption that you need your magic imaginary friend to have what the brain chemically can produce for us, but you're still wrong. You're supposed to, you're supposed to not only show that all the neuroscientists are wrong, you're supposed to show that there's this extra thing, this, this immortal ghostly aspect of ourselves that doesn't have anything to do with whether we have a self or make decisions. You're supposed to show that this extra thing, we all agree that we have physical bodies. Great. We've got that. We have minds. We have selves. We have decisions. We have will. Great. Now show us the extra thing, the soul that passes on after we die. Show us that. Show us that we're, we're mistaken in not exaggerating shit that ain't there. When you say we're reducing the world down to, down to what it is, no, you're exaggerating, adding in shit that isn't. Okay, here's the transcript, what Aaron said. Let me see if I can translate. Okay. I feel misunderstood. I understand your position that you believe we need a soul in order to have things like free will. But Tom and I are merely asking for empirical evidence that we must have a soul for these things. Our explanation seems more s simple than, than yours, in my opinion. It's based on something we all agree with, that the material exists. I am understanding your position as saying we need to add more to the material. And I'm asking for empirical evidence for this. Not just, but it has to be true. Maybe next time I should uh, 
This is my, what about my daughter? Just need something soft to hold. <laughs> now, I wonder how differently the debate would have gone if, um, how differently the debate would have gone if I would have, uh, if Arn would have done what I did. Would it have made any difference? Maybe, maybe not. But I think with an issue like this, where uh, it is so complicated, meaning that something like free will can, or determinism can go against our intuitions, our, our inclinations, that we just really feel a certain way. I'm reminded of that, um, oh, let's see if I can bring it up. See, if I was in that debate, I would probably would have brought up something simple like, um, Uh, what's the name of that color illusion? Oh, yeah, this one. Because their whole argument, Cliff and Stewart's, their whole argument was that it just basically feels like we're free. It feels like there's more to us than molecules and matter and but here's the thing our intuitions can be wrong and when you look at this picture and see two different colors i'm here to tell you you're wrong these are the same colors and but yet we're looking at it we're staring at it in the eyes i mean we're st staring at the picture with our own eyes and we're saying no there's two separate colors there but you can prove it to yourself that they're basically the same color by just taking your finger and blocking out the middle portion. You'll see immediately. So if our brains can play tricks on us on something simple like this, it can also play tricks on us that, um, that our choices are indeed completely free. Now, maybe they are, but it's still, I, I understand what Tom Jump is saying, that it's either random or determined. And I think... Christians can empathize with that, but they, I think they have to say that free choices are a creation out of nothing, that it just pops into our, our heads of a free choice. And, uh, and then they would say, well, that's what God did with the universe, so, and we're created in the image of God, and so therefore we have the ability to just create something out of nothing, in other words, a free choice. But another part of Christians would admit and agree that when they make choices, there's usually, usually reasons behind them. It's not random. It's like, oh, I chose this because I like this, or I chose this because I think this is the best way to go, or whatever. I think very few Christians would be willing to admit that, oh, I have no reasons for what I chose. I just chose it. But once you admit that you have reasons to choose things, are you not saying that there's a cause and effect? That reason is the cause for your choice and maybe there's a cause for that cause and a cause for that cause and so on another uh way i would have tackled this is to um is to take the position if this is kind of outside outside of christianity this particular debate uh they mentioned jesus in the bible a few times but the way I would have tackled this, if it was directly about Christianity, that there's an immaterial soul that the God of the Bible gave and so forth, I would have just become a hyper-Calvinist and say, look, just because we have a soul doesn't mean we're not determined. Just because there's an immaterial soul doesn't mean we have libertarian free will. That if God has um, decreed certain things, everything, then we're not just a bag of chemicals. We're a bag of, we're, we're a vat of, of soulness. <laughs> we're a vessel filled with soulness. So that'd be another way to go. I think, in the, I won't play it, but the Q&A had a great question for Cliff and Stuart, which I would have pounced on much harder than I think T-Jump and Aaron did. And that is, does God have free will, libertarian free will, 
can God have done otherwise? And that's a question that thinking, educated Christians, I don't think like very much. Because there's implications if you say yes, and there's implications if you say no, negative Im implications. If you say that God has libertarian free will, the God of the Bible, then you're basically saying he did not need to create anything. He could have chosen not to create anything. And once you go down that road, you lose the excuse why there's evil in the world. So, like some Christians actually say this. They say that the reason why there's pain, evil, and sin in the world is because God's nature is a creator nature. He had to create. He couldn't have just let things go the way they were with just him in three persons. He had to do it. Some Christians say this, not all. And so that's how they get out of the argument of, um, well, uh, you know, God predicted that, people would fall and people would mess up, but, but it's in his nature to create and, and share his goodness to other sentient beings. Now, if you say that God is not free, that he had to create and he has no free will, then you've got another problem. Then basically God's a, what they say to, to, uh, to humans is God's a robot. He's just doing what he's programmed to do. You could even say he's programmed to do what he foreknew he would do. And he cannot do otherwise. But again, a lot of Christians look at the Old Testament and say, oh, no, that's not true because humans change God's mind and he interacts and he's a personal God. And by definition, if you're a personal God, you interact with your creation and, and you might have uh, plans to do some things and then those plans are thwarted by humans, which is true, by the way, if you read the Old Testament. God's plans are thwarted by mere mortals because they repent and then God withholds his judgment. Or they don't repent, and then God gives his judgment. It's all dependent on humans, right? Oh, but there's so many plot holes because the whole thing, even about salvation, you know, it's predestination, foreknowledge that before you even exist and have choices, before you even had a free choice to choose God, before you were even a, a sperm and egg, God knew what you would do, and that's what you would do because if God did not know it, if God knows it incorrectly, he's not omniscient. So what will happen is what God foreknows what will happen. And if you say, well, God knows what you would have chosen if you exist, then you're saying, man, there's Calvinists who are just applauding me right now. If you, if you take that position like a Molinist or whatever, God knows all the possible choices you're going to make and so forth. Um, then you're saying man is, that God is dependent on mere mortals. It's like the man has to come first and then God's knowledge of what that man will do comes second. It puts man, I won't say above God, but at least outside of God that determines what this God will believe or think or know. And a lot of Christians can't swallow that either. That's why there's Calvinists, by the way. They avoid that problem. So there's so many issues with free will within the Christian worldview so many tough issues that uh, uh, they can't avoid it. And uh, my advice is let the Christians, you know, fight amongst themselves about these issues, which they do. They do a lot. But I don't know. I understand Aaron's frustrations because he does hear the same things over and over again. And if you listen to this debate, when T-Jump and him asked them, why must there be a soul for free will, for moral accountability, for rationality? Why must there be? Cliff just repeats the same thing. I think he did at least three times. And it's just basically because our experience is just, it just has to be that way. Because we, we, we are free. And if, and if you say we're not free, then then the world's going to go uh, to hell in the handbasket because where does moral accountability go? Which is a tough question for atheists or non-Christians to answer. How do you uh, talk about moral responsibility if there is no free will, libertarian free will? And my answer to that is because all the cause and effects are so complicated, my, the words coming out of my mouth will affect someone in a way that I'm not aware. So if I say to someone, 
uh, don't chop off your ear. And that leads them to not chopping off their ear. I don't know why I picked that one. Um, then, you know, that could have all been determined, but we don't know it. So I just say these things that will prevent something. And if I say to someone, shame on you for doing that. And if that shame causes someone not to do something, that's a good thing for society, if I'm right. So we still give people shame. We still give people praise when they do something good, even though it could be true that all that was determined online, but we just don't know what is determined online. So we basically act like we're free. And again, this is the same thing that Calvinists say when they talk about, we don't know who's saved and who's lost. So we still witness, we still evangelize, because God might use that. And the broader point is all this free will talk uh, or the immaterial soul talk, even if there is an immaterial soul, that still doesn't get you that Jesus rose from the dead. And I, Christians agree with this. You still got miles and miles of road to walk before you equate a soul to the God of the Bible. Smart Christians realize this. But since they're, it's so tough for them to defend Christianity historically and empirically with miracles and so forth, like the napkin is not going to light on fire if I soak it in water and, pray, and you pray in the name of Jesus. So because they can't do miracles, repeat miracles, uh, at least once every five years or something, um, they have to resort to things like philosophical arguments or, or big issues like um, libertarian free will, immaterial souls. The thing that we all can agree on on this topic of the immaterial soul, and I said this in the prior video where I was critiquing Cliff and Stuart, is that we can set up experiments and testing that would increase our confidence, Aaron's conf confidence, T jumps mine, Cliff, and even Cliff and Stuart. Like Cliff and Stuart believe that the soul exists, but I bet you I could increase their confidence even more. On, their, on this belief, if we could kill people, have them dead for days and days, maybe even a week, and bring them back to life, and re reliably, predictably, have them report random numbers on a random number generator. That would say that the conscious mind is separate from the material. That would be way better evidence in my opinion, and I think even in Cliff and Stewart's opinion, than what they're saying now, which is basically, it just has to be. Because it just feels like it. Right? Isn't that reasonable? By the way, if I was debating these guys, that's probably something I would have said. I would try to get common ground of what would be a great test. And at that point, they would probably say, well, let's talk about NDEs, near-death experiences, and so forth. Which in my last video, I kind of like, was so terribly disappointed. <laughs> Yes, Felix Rodriguez. Um, uh, I, I actually think I do have a soul. If you look deep into my eyes, especially when I sing the blues, you'll see my soul. By the way, I didn't see, um, when I was playing the music and so forth, I didn't see any uh, of the comments, so forgive me. I was just hoping everything was working. <laughs> Doug, Doug's giving us the Jesus was moved with compassion translation of Jesus was indignant. Yeah, you're talking about with, uh, with Aaron. Cliff acts like he has not realized what he calls his free will is manipulated by his subconscious. Felix asks, what is the alternative of having no soul, would you suggest? I don't understand the question. The alternative of having no soul is not having a soul. That we're all material. And that things like consciousness, free will, might be an illusion. Or it might be real, but it's an emergent property, which is things T-Jump and Arn was ta were talking about. 
if it were true that we don't have an immaterial soul, would you want to know it? If it were true that we did have an immaterial soul, I wouldn't want to know that. Now, but some people might not say that, you know, if it were true that there is no immaterial soul, some people might choose not to know that because it might not feel good. Hey, thank you so much, T-Jumps Chair. Uh, where do you get the money, T-Jumps Chair? Like, does it come from, like, the in the back underneath the sofa cushion type thing? If we traded Cliff, Cliff's and Stuart's brains, which body would be the souls in? Yeah, that's a good question. Like you have so many, um, so many interesting problems when you introduce an immaterial soul. Like if you chop off your hand, have you lost a little bit of soulness? Most Christians would say, of course not. Don't be silly. Well, if you chop off your half your brain, do you lose some soulness? I would almost be tempted, like if I was R and T jump here. I would almost be tempted to say, you know what, guys? Hmm. You may be right. But I got a question. If there is an immaterial soul, is it dependent or independent on the body, the material? See, this question, I don't think they want to go, they don't want to go down that road. Because an atheist like myself could say there is something immaterial, whatever that means, something special, X factor, whatever, about our mind. But I could still say, yeah, it exists, maybe, but I'm going to claim that it's completely 100% dependent on my brain. And that gets back to the experiment I, I talked about earlier. How would you falsify that? You know, get rid of the brain and somehow test if the soul is still there. Cliff and Stuart remind me of email scammers that leave spelling and grammar errors in so that they can purposely attract the gullible. Well, Blaster Master, Cliff's been doing this for 20 years at least. I don't think he's a con man or a scammer. He really believes this stuff. And I've seen enough of Cliff's work to know that he's doing this to please his daddy. And not, I don't, I say it that way on purpose because he is a child and Yahweh God is his daddy and he wants to please his daddy. It's a perfect word picture for a lot of Christians who have a passion for evangelism. They so deeply want people not to leave this belief or to join this belief because daddy is so good. Daddy can make your life so much better. And most, most importantly, Daddy can make sure that after you die here on earth, you'll have a wonderful life for eternity. It's all about pleasing Daddy. Can you debate Sam Shimon? I don't debate lionfish. I just translate for people who debate. <laughs> it's a lot more fun. It's a lot easier, less time consuming. You know what's interesting uh, watching some comments in the live stream is you know how I often joke that I'm under the power of Satan, which it says in First John. Um, you'd be surprised how many Christians. I, I say that as a joke and in jest, but there I I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of Christians actually believe that's true, that I'm directly under the power of Satan, and. I've had Christians who will, when I, we're conversing in text, and I'll say something like, did you realize that just talking to me via text might open up an entryway for demonic activity in your life? <laughs> oh, and that's probably bad of me to say, because they stopped right at that moment talking to me. Like they believe this stuff so strongly by the way, there's a hint. If you want someone to stop bothering you who's a Christian, say something like that. They will leave you alone because they believe it's true and they're scared. They're scared. 
they're scared that something will go bump in the night because you're talking because they're talking to an atheist who's directly under the power of Satan. Man, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Hundreds of Monkey says, Aaron's anger was justified. They're both huge douchebags, a couple of punks. What's the saying? Um, you can attract flies with honey or poop. I'm the honey. Who do you reckon to get converted more Christians, Tom's chair or Aaron's dog? You know, that's an interesting question. This is not my goal. The goal of my channel is to entertain myself. However, I sometimes wonder out of sheer curiosity, if I and guys like me have deconverted more people out of Christianity than guys like Cliff has converted into Christianity, I kind of wish a God did exist so I could have that answer, that question answered. I hope the God of the Bible exists so when I die, Cliff and I will still be standing side by side and, and God will say to me, Doug Pine Creek, oh, you screwed up, man. Bend your knee. Boom, and I bend my knee. And uh, Yahweh looks at me and says, What do you have to say for yourself? I just have one question, God. Just one question. Did I deconvert more than Cliff converted? <laughs> well, yeah, you did, Pine Creek. By 540. Poof. My apologies to Aaron Raw. He was scheduled to come on, but we ran out of time. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Take care.